and welcome to the American Massage and Chiropractic Conference pre-conference broadcast series on One Concept Radio. I'm Felicia Brown, and I'll be your host for this interview and series. This is one of several broadcasts with the presenters and experts who are appearing in Atlanta, Georgia, May 17th through 19th, 2013, and who are brought to you by One Concept. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the 2013 American Massage and Chiropractic Conference sponsors, Massage Warehouse Script, MPA Media, the Chiropractic Leadership Alliance, 100 Year Lifestyle, Mindfluence, ABMP, Biofreeze, and Massage Envy Careers for making this year's event possible. Our special guest today is Ruth Werner. We will be talking about her classes, the ethics of client communication, talking to your clients about their health, mental health conditions, and fibromyalgia and the invisible diseases. But first, let me tell you a little about Ruth. Ruth Werner is a retired massage therapist and an active writer and educator who is also the president of the Massage Therapy Foundation. Her book, A Massage Therapist's Guide to Pathology, was one of the first textbooks specifically created for massage therapists when it came out in 1998. It is now in its fifth edition and is used all over the world. Ruth lives in Oregon, where she walks on the beach, plays with fabric dyeing, and sews at every available opportunity. <laughs> Ruth, welcome to the American Massage and Chiropractic Conference pre-conference broadcast series on One Concept Radio. Thanks so much for making time to talk about me, or talk about <laughs> talk I'll about the event talk with about me. You, talk about me. It's all about me, really. That's all I'm here for. <laughs> Um, but I want to definitely talk to you about the event and your classes. Well, thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward. This will be the first time I've had the opportunity to attend an American Massage Conference, so I'm um, looking forward to a big time. And you're going to get one. It's going to be a great conference. Um, lots of fun, lots to do, lots of great memories in the making, and tons of great education, including yours. And so, of course, you know, thinking of your education, I definitely am interested in talking to you about your classes. But first, as I've been doing with all the educators this year, I want to get your thoughts on the idea of creating community. Um, as you may have heard, part of the focus at this year's conference is the idea of creating community by adding a community room where attendees can visit with speakers more personally and learn more about how they can make a real difference at home and in our profession. So, of course, Ruth, I'd like to know, why do you think it's important to create community in the massage and healing arts world, in our practices or businesses, and at the conference? Well, I just love this idea. and. And because I am currently um, the president of the Massage Therapy Foundation, which is our profession's philanthropic organization um, dedicated to advancing the practice of massage therapy through supporting research and education and community service. So this is, this is sort of the filter that I look at everything through right now. Um, for me, the idea about about massage therapists in community really speaks to um, the limited opportunities that we have to share some of the most ex important experiences that happen um, in session. So when we're working with clients and we are and we're creating this this private and sacred and beautiful space. Um, which is as it should be, you know, that's really wonderful. But when things happen in that space that are important, when there's when there's a, a surprising outcome, whether it's a positive or a negative one, um, it's it, it, we have such limited ability to share that experience, to share that discovery with our colleagues, and um, and through. Case, through case reports, through research, through appropriate reporting, you know, that, that, that preserves confidentiality, that preserves privacy, but that, but that shares experiences with our colleagues, our entire profession can be enriched. 
And, and, you know, whether that happens anecdotally, because everybody who works with me knows that my very favorite sentences always begin with the phrase, I have a client who, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so whether that happens anecdotally or whether that happens in a more formal way, this is a way that massage therapists communicate with each other and, and, and we get limited opportunities to do that. And it's absolutely critical because otherwise, you know, every time you have a client come to see you, you're reinventing the wheel. You're having to start over from zero. And um, I'm just really excited about the, about sharing with my colleagues that there are ways to appropriately share um, our experiences that happen in the session room with each other that that is that that can really move the all of us forward. Um, and it's these 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 opportunities, meetings like this, the community rooms. Uh, um, that that give us juice and energy to to get more serious about documenting what happens in ways that we can share with each other and 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 educate each other. Well, I like the term that you use, juice, uh-huh. <laughs> juice and energy, because um, it's definitely what happens when you come to conferences. I mean, you and I both go to conferences all the time as educators and. Um, I feel so privileged to be able to do that and to be able to network with folks that I wouldn't get to to meet or see any other time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just me, the excitement of being able to connect with educators like you, Mm -hmm. where I might not be able to do that if I were sitting in my office here in Greensboro, North Carolina all the time. It really is what keeps me excited about this profession and and really – has re-energized my own practice over the last few years. The what mm-hmm. you know, the sharing, like what you're saying. But I think we as educators understand it maybe a little bit more, and we really like cling to each other or, or run for each other. Oh my gosh, we have to get together. And I I think sometimes um, people that are attending conferences that are maybe less, shall I say, seasoned, they haven't been in the profession as long, maybe feel shy. Mm-hmm. And don't think that, you know, they maybe not, don't think they have something to contribute and they may keep to themselves more. And so for me, I think this idea of community is helping them to see that we get as much from them and we want to hear what they have to say, you know, that it is every, there's a place for everybody at the table, so to speak. Oh, that's so true. Uh, you know, as, as any, any educator will, well, all right, I'm going to make a broad sweeping generalization and say any good educator will attest that they learn far much more from their students than they than they teach them. If you see what I mean. <laughs> oh, I know. I know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yeah. Well, I hope that this community room will be a place that students realize, you know, regardless of how long they've been in practice or even if they're still in school, that they do have something to share and that together, as you said, we can all move forward if we all bring, you know, our best, our ideas, our experiences mm-hmm. to one another. Well, and I'd like to add another thing to that, which is that um, massage therapy as a profession is, is I think, really unique in that, in that the, the, the people who, are, who create the content that you're learning in the classrooms, you know, the textbook writers like me and you and, and, and half a dozen others, most of whom will be there in, in Atlanta, um, are still active in the field. And there just aren't a lot of fields where you can, you know, go to a physical therapy con- uh, conference and meet the person who wrote your textbook, right. or go to a or go to a cardiac surgery conference and meet the person who developed the techniques. Do you know what I mean? I do. It's um, and it's it's. I would consider it absolutely thrilling to 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 go and and be able to meet the people who are who are still deeply involved with forming the, the content that goes into the education in our field. Well, it's, a, it's going to be a great opportunity, and I can't wait to see the shape that it takes. Yeah, now, me too. talking about education, you are teaching several different interesting topics, um, ethics, mental health conditions, and fibromyalgia with associated disorders mm-hmm. at the American Massage Conference. That's that's a pretty broad group of things. So I'm wondering if you could just tell us, Ruth, um, what your background is and what allows you to speak on such a variety of topics. <laughs> well, the the short answer to your question, Felicia, is absolutely nothing, um, except that I'm a curious person. So so people who attend my classes um, very often have to sit through just a a, a, a two minute 
biographical sketch of who I am and, and, and in some ways, more importantly, who I'm not. I went to massage school in the early 80s, and my first transcript says I am the proud graduate of a 125-hour program, which at that time um, and in that place was considered pretty pretty ambitious and exhaustive. Um, and, you know, I come out of a different era of massage therapy education. While I was in school, I was extremely dissatisfied with how much how much information I got about massage in the context of people living with illness. Um, I, I remember flunking that that test for the you know the very short amount of time that we spent on it in the classroom, and because of that, I got really um, uh, really involved with trying to figure this out and trying to learn more. Um, it was during this time that massage therapy as a profession was really beginning to make that transition from, you know, being a, a treat that people with some extra money would indulge in once in a while to being um, a strategy that people with complicated health situations might employ to help them be healthier and to improve their quality of life. And I was just convinced that we just did not, there was not enough information about massage in the context of illness and disease. So I developed a little bee in my bonnet about this at the school where I was a teacher. Um, and then uh, when I had to leave that position because um, a life change took us away from Seattle where I was working and I had two little babies um, that I needed to stay home and, and take care of, my my teacher, my boss, um, commissioned me to create a document for the school. He said, you know, you 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 have all this passion about massage and the con- and massage and contraindications. Why don't you why don't you write us a document? And now this is in the years before everybody had internet. So I had half a dozen big, thick, boring, difficult medical texts to weed through. Um but I had a pretty good idea of the of the things that would influence decisions for massage therapists, and that was the basis on which I wrote a document for that school, which eventually became the author's proposal for a book. Now, you know, many, many years later, uh, keeping that book up to date, as you said, it's it's now in its fifth edition, keeping that book up to date is, is essentially a, a, a full-time job, but I want to emphasize that I am self-taught. I came to speak and write and learn about pathologies because I wanted to be a good, ethical, responsible massage therapist. Um, I, I'm actually, as it, as it turns out, you know, who could have foreseen, I am much, much more comfortable in a classroom setting than I am in a, in a massage setting, and so I gave up my practice. That's why I'm a retired massage therapist, but I am an active teacher and writer and educator. Um, but I... Uh, it, I I am not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. I'm not a physical therapist or an occupational therapist. I am a massage therapist with a lot of interest and curiosity. And the reason I, I, I really love to emphasize this point is that, um, y- you know, no one will ever write a book that has every possible disease in it. It's not possible. Um, you will always be have the have have people come to see you who have some condition that you've never heard of um, every person has the ability to look stuff up and make good critical thinking decisions about the appropriateness of their work. My job is to i feel is to help people understand how to balance those risks and benefits um, and if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, and so that's what gives me the ability to speak to this, to this, you know, to these topics, Felicia, is that I was the one who was willing and patient enough and had a good medical dictionary, um, <laughs> to, to, you know, which, for which I now write terms, uh, uh, to, you know, to wade through all this background information. Um, but that doesn't make me the only person who can do this. Everybody can put together enough information to make a good decision about their clients if they're willing to, um, you know, to do that kind of work. Well, I think you make a really good point, and it, tie, it ties a little bit back to that community room 
um, very similar to my own story about, you know, where I come from with marketing. Why am I so good at marketing? Because I wanted to learn everything I could about how to be successful. Mm-hmm. And I just dove in head first. Do I have an MBA in marketing? No. <laughs> you know, I was right. actually a high school dropout that came back and finished, but I don't have this beautiful, illustrious academic career as such, not the mm-hmm. traditional kind, but diving mm-hmm. in and learning everything I could from sources well and above outside, you know, outside of the massage therapy realm, but going to marketing experts and learning everything I could. That's how I moved in that direction. And I, I think that's so great of you to say that. Um, so that the people listening recognize that they too can be what they want to be if they have the drive and the enthusiasm um, for that, you know, the part that they're passionate about. Exactly. That's so true. Now, you're also the president of the Massage Therapy Foundation. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering how that position has influenced your teaching and writing. Um, in every conceivable way it has um, in that so here's, <laughs> here's, here's, here's a sentence I use a lot. Way back when I was in massage school, um, in the early 80s, <laughs> the evidence base, the research base for what we understood about massage was we really relied on this book called Beard's Massage. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Um, it was the only thing available at that time that, 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 um, tried to, that attempted to explain what massage does to the body, and it did that based on conclusions drawn from animal experiments in the 40s. Oh. So um, severed monkey nerves and, and, and injecting ink into rabbit ears and, you know, all kinds of, of weird things. And... Um, and and so, you know, we we would make these statements like massage boosts circulation by 300%, mm-hmm. or massage will kill someone with cancer because right. it boosts circulation by 300%, or massage flushes toxins, or, you know, we would come up with these with these statements based on best guesses and folklore and tradition, but the last thing these things were based on was research because right. there was none, Right. And, um, and and it really wasn't until um, probably the late 80s, early 90s that, um, and, and this is partly when the foundation became, the foundation started doing research grants in 1993. It was formed in, in 90 to 91, and it started doing grants um, largely thanks to the AMTA uh, in 1993. And among the very first grants that the foundation gave were research grants to some really brave people who asked that question about massage and cancer. I mean, really the question was, was, uh, really? Massage has nothing to offer someone who's dealing with the challenges of having cancer? Right. Um, And they turned the question upside down and said, does massage have benefits to offer this population? Uh, and, you know, and, and the, the courage to ask that question has changed our scope of practice. So that when I went to massage school and my pathology teacher said, and I quote, massage therapy and cancer do not go in the same sentence. Right. You know, now we have people building entire careers, working with cancer patients, um, and doing wonderful things for the quality of life and their ability to tolerate treatment and, um, and this opens new avenues for research. I mean, what if, what if receiving massage made chemotherapy more effective so you could get the same results with less poison, mm. right? I mean, those are the kinds of questions that we can ask today that 30 years ago we couldn't even think about. So, um, I, I, and I did not just say that that's true, that massage, you know, that we know that massage right. does something different to chemotherapy. I don't want anyone to misinterpret that. But that's the kind of question that we can ask now. Um, and it, it, it and and that finds its way into my writing and my teaching every day. I get really excited about this. I don't know if you can hear it, but I just I got up and I'm <laughs> jumping up and down um, because – I find this tremendously exciting that we don't have to base our education on best guesses and folklore. We now have a pretty solid evidence base that is growing every day about how massage affects the body. 
and um, and in my writing, which is which is mainly around pathology and just introducing massage therapists to ideas about research, because I'm not a researcher, um, uh, I I get to fall back on this all all the time, and I just love being able to point that out. Now, the downside of it is that very often, more often than sometimes we'd like, research does not support something that we thought was so. Um, or research, ju- all, all that the research does is open more questions. So this question, for instance, for instance, about massage and circulation, it's an open question. The research so far has been all over the map. Um, and what that, you know, in terms of results, we're developing new testing tools um, that look more closely at what happens in capillaries and what happens to skin temperature and what happens to um, to the perfusion of blood in muscles and whatnot. Um, and, and those advances are changing the answers to those questions every day. My heart goes out to teachers because teachers, you know, are, 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 they want to be able to say a thing is true. Um, and we can't always do that legitimately anymore. Not the way we used to be able to do because right. we thought something was true. Um, but I just, I find the whole, I, you know, I'm, I'm someone who's not, who's not afraid of unanswered questions. But when you're a student, you'd like to be able to have, you know, good solid answers to questions. And, 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 and sadly, if we're going to be really accurate, sometimes those questions don't have solid answers. Well, and, it, you know, as you're talking about this for the first time, I made a correlation in my mind that, you know, the, even the medical community for years would talk about certain things that would help. I mean, I think way, way back where they thought using leeches to suck out your blood was a healthy thing to do when you mm-hmm. were sick. And, mm-hmm. you know, then later research proved that that was not really effective um, among many other things that they used to take as truth. And well, then, I mean, let's look at something so. as, as recent as um, stress causes ulcers. Right. You know, stress contributes to ulcers, but the vast majority of, of, of gastric ulcers are related to bacterial infection. That totally changes how we treat them. Right. You know, um, and, and that just came about in the early 80s. So if we're going to become evidence informed right if 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 our profession is going to and i and i truly you know i i i work every day toward this goal that our profession is going to become evidence informed um then we need to be brave enough to um uh to change our mind about things that we thought was were true exactly well i'm i'm starting to see you know, as I said, as I think back about other things in the medical profession that they found what they thought were true and weren't, mm-hmm. hopefully we can have the same sort of willingness to just keep moving forward towards what is true instead of clinging to old beliefs and leeches. You know? <laughs> so, now well, that said, it was good in my day. Used, I just want to say leeches are used therapeutically in certain circumstances. So are maggots. Well, so as I, I just taught a class this week where we talked about um, using components of vampire bat spit in in clot, bless, clot busting medication. I mean, there's all kinds of things there, where we you know where we noticed something in nature that seemed to be therapeutic, and we just have to get more refined about how we exactly. apply it. Well, I don't mean to compartmentalize or give a broad <laughs> statement about all leeches are bad. I'm sure they have their effects, but you know what I'm cut. We know where Felicia I'm Felicia Brown, anti-leech activist. That's right. That's me. Watch out. The campaign's on the horizon. Right. Well, um, Ruth, what I, I want to definitely, you know, I know we only have a limited amount of time with you today in your busy, busy life. Can we jump in and just talk a little bit about the three-hour classes you're going to be um teaching at the American Massage Conference. I know you've got one on mental health conditions. I'm really curious about that. Mm -hmm. What, what are you, what can people expect in that class? Sure. In the class on mental health conditions, um, what we'll be doing is looking at what we currently understand. And when I say we, I mean, really, I mean the conventional or allopathic medical community. Um, What is currently understood about um, a variety of anxiety disorders, a variety of depression-related disorders. Uh, let's see, it's anxiety, depression, addiction, and um, sleep disorders. 
Um, and I think that's it. I, I don't have my handout right in front of me. Um, but basically, it's a discussion of what is understood about these things. Um, and how that leads in, you know, and in other words, what's what's changing in our in our brains that leads to these to these symptoms, um, how they are treated co- typically in the conventional or allopathic medical community, and then where massage has some impact. And one of the reasons I really love teaching these classes is that the research says. Massage has a profound and very predictable um, influence on mood disorders. Um, and in many ways, that influence, that profoundly positive influence is more predictable, is more dependable, and is more consistent in research findings than the things that we went to massage school for, like massage and muscle soreness or massage and and um you know, tendon injuries or things like that. But most of us don't go to massage school to learn how to work with people who have anxiety disorders or who or who, or who have depression. Um, and I think that there's, you know, tremendous potential for us there. We're not sure what that mechanism is. We don't really know why massage appears to have this profound impact. We have some we have some theories, um, but I believe that as as more and more people understand this, both within our community and outside our community, more and more massage therapists are going to be called upon to be part of a healthcare team for people who are really, really struggling with mental health issues. Right. Um, so that's that's one thing that we're gonna that you know that's that's the main thrust or focus um, for the mental health class is, is, is what do we understand about what's really happening with, for instance, with bipolar disease or with um, major depressive disorder or uh, we, we talk about half a dozen, you know, different subtypes of depression. And the same is true for the anxiety section. Um, massage in the context of people who are recovering from addictions is a growing field. And, and in fact, the, the foundation has, um, has uh, funded some research in that setting. Um, and so, you know, we'll be talking about what we understand about these things and then what what we understand, how massage has traditionally been used, and then what the research says about massage in, the, in these contexts. Um, the other three-hour class is, is one of my favorites. I put it together several years ago, and it continues to evolve. It's called Fibromyalgia and the Invisible Diseases. Um, and, and really the focus there is on uh, fibro. Uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and irritable bowel syndrome. This is mm. a triad of um, chronic pain and stress-related disorders that have so much in common um, that I believe as we continue to become more sophisticated in how we understand these things, we'll just see that 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 they may be sort of different manifestations of, of, of one sort of mm. larger central nervous system uh, uh, dysfunction that has to do with oh how we manage pain and how and how we manage stress. Um, in addition to those three, we'll also probably be talking about myofascial pain syndrome because the the confusion between the tender points we see with fibromyalgia and the trigger points that we see with myofascial pain syndrome can can lead to people getting being. Uh, uh, um, uh, mistreated is the wrong word, but you know, lead to massage therapists making some mistakes that don't serve our clients well. Um, and then, depending on how the time goes, I I usually am prepared also to talk about hypothyroidism. That's a, a a completely different condition, but it has a lot of symptoms in common with these others. Really, and they and it all occurs in the same population group. So. Um, yeah, so so that's that set up. I love talking. I love the fibro classes because almost everybody has clients who have fibromyalgia, and and it's one of those conditions that has both been historically both underdiagnosed and overdiagnosed. Um, and we're making big inroads in what we understand about this. Well, I think there's a lot to um, to get excited about in both of those. I mean, I I've often seen similarities uh, between the fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, and Years ago, several other conditions. I think one of them was multiple chemical sensitivity disorder or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, have just, you know, have my own hypotheses about um, 
about those. But the mental health conditions, I, I definitely see that as a trend that's growing and have been really excited to see research backing up what I've personally experienced that uh, massage can have a profound impact on um, someone when they're feeling down or blue or grieving, uh, mm -hmm. having problems sleeping, oh. that sort of thing. So it's really encouraging to hear that the research continues to show um, such a positive effect and, you know, to open the eyes of, of some students to that and maybe help them specialize in that area I think is fantastic. Yeah, it, 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 it. it. Uh, I think that we, it, there's a lot of unexplored potential, you know, in the same way that understanding massage has benefits to offer people with cancer. Um, if we, if we look at the benefits massage has to offer people with mid, mood disorders and think about, you know, what a low impact, low risk intervention this is with, with a high potential for a good outcome. Um, it, uh, I, I think there's a huge amount of potential for us in this in this setting. Most definitely, Ruth. With with all the classes that you're teaching at the conference, you know, with such a, a diverse group of topics, I'm wondering if you have one message that you'd like all massage therapists to hear and understand. That's a really hard question, Felicia. Um, <laughs> The one message, yes, why yes, I'm glad you asked that. Um, and this again goes back to the to the to the foundation and the and the and the the, the attitude that I have come to adopt because of my work with the Massage Therapy Foundation. And 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 so the one thing that I'd love to impart um, for the people who work with me in my workshops is that if you don't write something down, it didn't happen. In other words, you know, if you're, if, if you're working with a client, let's say it's a client who has depression or it's a client or, or, or your client has sleeping disorders or your client has fibro and, um, and you're getting results, that is wonderful and it's, and, and good on you. But if you're not writing down those results, in a way that maybe could be turned into a case report or added to a study, um, then you're working in a vacuum and it's not fair. Um, I believe that the th that one of the things that is really going to move our profession forward, um, and 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 my bias here is moving our profession forward as healthcare rather than as personal service. Um, is when we get a lot more rigorous about writing things down in ways that are appropriate to share. Um, because until we do that, each one of us is working in a private little bubble, and that bubble is beautiful for you and your clients. But if you don't find ways to appropriately share what happens, um, then our progress is slowed. So the way I talk, I, I teach a class on writing case reports, and it's, I call it citizen science. It's 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 everybody working together to advance our profession. You don't have to be a professional researcher to document your findings. All you have to be is a good massage therapist who documents. Um, and so that's the thing I think I would like to that that you know if I were to leave a legacy on our profession, instilling that as a sense of responsibility between us. Um, I think that's something that would be that would be very fulfilling. Well, and definitely one more way to bring us forward as a group, as a community, so that and we that, all... that's that's it. It's speaking to the community. Yeah. So uh, you know, I know we're running short on time, but I do want to say that I'm, I'm also teaching this one-hour class on client communications, talking to people about their health. And 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 so here's an example of this. One of the components of that class is I have dozens of scenarios. Of, of, you know, difficult conversations that have come up mid-session when clients in the middle of their session will say, oh yeah, that rash, what do you think that is? Or, oh, by the way, did I tell you I just tested positively for hepatitis C? Or, mm. you know, in, in the middle of session, these things come up and it may make us have to change what we're doing. But these, these stories come to me from people over a period of, you know, uh, oh gosh, let's see, um, close to 20 years and they so they spread across time they spread across geography 
Um, and and so we have in you know in these stories we have community with your your colleagues your colleagues your cohorts over uh, you know over the whole country over a couple of decades. We need more ways to share our experiences with each other, um, and there are good ways to do that. And I you know I just want to get us really excited about about doing that. Well, I think that's um, a, another great class, one that's going to be very valuable and worthwhile for people attending. And so many people are going to be filling up the seats in all your classrooms. Oh, I hope so. I'm sure they will. <laughs> but in the meantime, I know folks listening um, that perhaps can't attend the conference or just want to learn more about you before then um, would like to find a way to reach out. So how can people get in touch with you and find out more information about what you do, about your book, or about the Massage Therapy Foundation? Well, I'm, I appreciate that opportunity. So the Massage Therapy Foundation is really easy. It's massagetherapyfoundation.org, um, and we'd love to uh, invite everybody. Come to the website, click around, see what looks interesting and exciting to you there, because I bet you'll find something that speaks to you. Um, I have a website, but frankly, while I am the president of the foundation, my website has taken, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, embarrassed talking to uh, the marketing maven about this, but oh. <laughs> I have not been good about keeping my website up to date. But if you want to um, kind of check out more about me and the pathology classes that I teach, and that's just ruthwerner.com, um, probably the uh the best way to be in touch with me right now unless unless we're already um in touch somehow is to find me on Facebook just look me up Ruth Werner on Facebook i say yes to almost everybody if you're a massage therapist um and and through there i post about the foundation all the time i post about my classes um and i uh invite anybody who wants to have a conversation you know and i have a client who kind of conversation um that's a good place to do it because that's a place where people can can share. Fantastic. Well, I know after today's broadcast, everyone listening is ready to come to the conference and register for one or all of your classes. Oh, come on in. We're going to have such a good time. You'll never believe that pathology could be so much fun. Uh, exactly. Well, just to refresh everybody's memory and what to look for, the classes are the ethics of client communication, talking to clients about their health, mental health conditions, and fibromyalgia and the invisible diseases. Ruth, thanks so much for a great conversation today and just for making the time to be with us. Um, we're so glad and honored to have you uh, at this year's American Massage Conference uh, and Chiropractic Conference, rather, in Atlanta. Well, thanks. I'm really looking forward to being there, and um, and this community room sounds like a great place. So um, everybody come come by and be sure to say hi. I know there will be a line of folks waiting to talk to you about all of this. And, Ruth, I'm going to switch gears and make sure that everybody listening knows exactly how they can be a part of the community room and this year's conference. The American Massage and Chiropractic Conference is one of the largest exhibitions of massage and chiropractic products, continuing education and business opportunities for practitioners of both disciplines. This year's conference will feature over 100 exhibitors, continuing education classes of one-hour, three-hour, and one-day workshops, including Ruth's. Other events during the weekend include Friday night's famous Facebook meet and greet, where our theme is disco. And then on Saturday night, we'll be hosting the One Concept Gala. The new conference value pass is just $87 and includes access to all one-hour CE presentations, the trade show, contests, events, community events, and more. And this year, we are also introducing the One Concept Pass, your ticket to full conference access. The One Concept Pass is just $349 or 299 if you purchase early and includes full days with James Wozlowski and Eric Brown, all three-hour uh, all three hours, including classes with Whitney Lowe, Aaron Mattis, Tina Allen, myself, and all one-hour presentations. All education is approved by the NCB, TMB, and Florida CE Broker, and CEs are included for chiropractors. Also, the One Concept Pass covers lunch each day, as well as access to the trade show, the chance to participate in special events, community opportunities, and contests with literally thousands of dollars in prizes. For students, the conference offers a free student day and Smart from the Start program on Friday, May 17th, which is sponsored by Massage Envy, Massage Warehouse Script, 
BioFreeze, and Bon Vital. This day is dedicated to massage and chiropractic students who are currently enrolled in school or who will graduate in 2013 and includes access to our opening session and trade show on Friday. All of this is happening at the Sheraton Atlanta, and I definitely suggest you make plans to stay there if possible. Single or double rates are $129 a night, but space is limited, so make your reservations now. Also, MPA Media is printing the American Massage and Chiropractic Conference event program inside their magazines, Massage Today, Dynamic Chiropractic, and Chiropractic Insights. These will be given out at the conference and distributed throughout the U.S. to over 133,000 practitioners. So if you are a vendor or educator who's listening in today and you'd like to get some great exposure for your class or product, contact MPA Media for details on being a part of the conference program. Now, if you're ready to register for the 2013 American Massage and Chiropractic Conference in Atlanta, and of course to meet Ruth Werner, myself, and the other amazing instructors, just go to oneconcept.com, that's the word one, O-N-E, concept.com, to access the conference schedule and register online. We also invite you to stay connected with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash American Massage Conference and American Chiropractic Conference. Again, the 2013 American Massage and Chiropractic Conference is made possible by all of our wonderful sponsors. Thank you so much to Massage Warehouse Script, MPA Media, the Chiropractic Leadership Alliance, 100 Year Lifestyle, MindFluence, ABMP, BioFreeze, and Massage Envy Careers. This is Felicia Brown, and on behalf of everyone from the American Massage and Chiropractic Conference and One Concept Radio, I want to thank you for tuning into this edition of the pre-conference broadcast series. We look forward to seeing you in Atlanta in May. Please also consider joining us later this year for the American Massage, Chiropractic, Acupuncture, and Spa Conference in San Diego, California in September, and the Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference in October in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Thanks again for tuning in, and have a fabulous day.